Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, in my last video, you saw me perform a home oil service on my new to me 2008 Range Rover Vogue SE, the very car I am sat in now and it is gorgeous. In that last video, I changed the oil, the oil filter, the cabin filter, the air filter and the fuel filter all from my parents' driveway. Today, we're going to be working on the Range Rover again. Oh, hello Lando. That's my cat Lando who I have tried to keep away as much as possible, but he's absolutely obsessed with cars. So he's definitely one of us, um, but he is trying to get himself into as many videos as possible, as you can see. Today, we're going to be working on the Range Rover again. However, this time, transforming the visual appearance of this road legal luxury tank. The title of this video then is transforming the Range Rover in 20 minutes, because that's how long it will take for you guys to see the changes. However, I can assure you it took a damn sight longer than that for me to actually film because of a number of issues I encountered along the way. In fact, I could have probably swam to Australia and kidnapped a kangaroo in the time it took me to make this video. So do stay tuned to find out exactly why that is and what happened. First, we're going to be changing the wheels on the car. Now, I like the wheels that this car is currently on. However, all of the alloys themselves are actually quite damaged and will need refurbishing. Also, I cannot afford to buy a different set or refurbish them because as you can see I cannot even afford to dress myself anymore so that's why we're going to be using the spare set the spare set we're going to be fitting is from my other Range Rover yes I still have two Range Rovers that Jiveny green one um, and they're absolutely perfect wheels so I want to switch them over to this because it's just nice easy and like I say I can't afford to buy new clothes let alone refurbish these wheels actually there's some news coming on that other Range Rover which is really really sad so stay tuned and subscribed if you want to hear more about what went wrong so fear not everyone i'm not a complete psychopath and will indeed be cleaning the wheels before fitting them onto the car they've probably never even been cleaned on the inside before but before cleaning them there was a slight issue in the fact that i made a bit of an error when buying this car in my blind excitement of spontaneously buying another range rover i forgot to check that the car had a locking wheel nut with it and well no prizes for guessing the outcome of that. To fix this then, I needed to source a replacement and near me is Lucas Land Rover Buckinghamshire and they actually have a drive-in service centre. Take a look. Well, this is really interesting. I am in a drive-in or drive-through Land Rover service centre. I'm at official Jaguar Land Rover here near Aylesbury. You can see there's a huge service rank down there. And yeah, look, you literally just drive in uh, and they ask you what you need. No, no appointment. Um, so my issue is that I don't have a locking wheel nut for this car and I need to be able to obviously take the wheels off and change the wheels. Um, so I've just come in to ask them about that. But the fact that I can just drive here uh, and the chap was very nice. He's gonna go and talk to parts of me and then let me wait in my car and tell me what's up. Here he comes actually. So what actually happened at the service center is I got down on my knees with a Land Rover technician and a handful of nuts. And we went through trying each one until we found the match, which happened to be type L. They took my details and promised to give me a call back to quote a bank breaking price for the nut. And guess what? They never called back. I had actually rightly assumed that this would happen. So ordered one online from JGS 4x4, which came and most importantly worked. Knowing now that I could get the wheels off the truck, which actually turned out to be naive, I turned to the spare set to give them a good old scrub. First, I sprayed over them with snow foam and alloy wheel cleaner and let that sink in for a moment. That then made the elbow grease part a little bit easier, scrubbing away all of the bedding grease, brake dust and dirt. I then sprayed with just water to get rid of the leftover dirty water and foam before repeating on the other side and drying. Nothing too comprehensive, but certainly a lot better than before with just 10 minutes of effort per wheel. In fact, if you're at home on a sunny day this weekend, you could just take your wheels off and do this for fun. It's very, very satisfying. Now with the replacement wheels prepped and ready for the car, it was time to get the old f***ers off and as they turned out to be. The first rear came off nice and easy just using a 22 mil socket and a Halfords 18 inch breaker bar. With the first rear wheel off, I thought it would be an ample time to turn towards the mud flap. I want to remove the mud flaps as part of this quote unquote transformation to give the car a little bit of a cleaner look. To get them off, it's theoretically quite easy. There's three 10 millimeter nuts, one at the top, one at the bottom of the mud flap and one in a sort of awkward place in the middle. There's also a little plastic clip. 
Once you've undone all of those, then the mud flap simply just pulls off. I was fiddling around with the middle nut here and didn't pull it off though, because for some reason that nut had expanded and wouldn't pull back through, something I'll need to look at another time. But off camera, the mud flap did just come straight off. The only downside, however, is removing this presumably if it's a factory fitted option, leaves a few holes in the bodywork. I'll endeavor to sort these in the future, but with both removed and the new wheels, as you'll see later in the video, from a distance at least, the car looks great. I wonder if JGS 4x4 supply new backbones and hip replacements on their website. That was probably the trickiest thing about replacing the two rear wheels. They're just so damn heavy. I ordered some new 22mm wheel nuts all round to replace the corroded originals, opting not to reuse the locking wheel nut. After replacing each wheel, I let the car back down and started it up to let the air suspension recalibrate itself. Jacking it up seems to somewhat confuse it and leave one side looking like it's collapsed. Nonetheless, letting the air suspension reset after each change seemed to work for me, although I'm sure this is probably not the conventional method. Now, sadly, this is where my confident and positive rhetoric will end, however, as to remove the front wheels would cost hundreds of pounds, about 10 years of my life, and enough foul language to rewrite the Urban Dictionary. So let me give you a little bit of an update then. I've been having an absolute nightmare. As you can see, the rear two wheels have been fitted without problem. New uh, nuts on them as well, so they're looking good. This, however, we've got a completely rounded nut. What I've tried so far is varying size sockets, hammering them on, and then using a breaker bar to try and uh, crush them off. I've tried hammering a flathead screwdriver into the nut, which is why we've got a huge hole in it and tried prying it off that way. And so I've just been another trip to BNQ. I've bought myself a blowtorch. We're gonna try and heat it. And I've also bought an impact drill. And this will be sort of the last attempt before I have to just take it somewhere to someone who knows what they're doing. Cause I just wanna get the bloody wheels off. The first thing I wanna try is I've bought this sort of locking wheel nut remover socket, which supposedly works up to 26 mil, but this, it just won't fit over, so I want to try a rubber mallet that I've just bought first to smash that on. If that fails, we'll try this guy. Just having a little bit of uh, coffee in my Legacy Legends Ferrari mug. Very, very cool. I'll leave a link to uh, their website in the description. They make these really cool sort of F1 heritage mugs. I've got a few of them that they sent out. Anyway, let's try this. These nuts. These nuts? Should be and are 22 mil on these cars. Now, because of the way that this is rounded, a 22, if I can just find a 22 quickly, doesn't fit. And a 23 oh, barely fits either. Just, I mean, look, it's really, but that just, spins it doesn't actually do anything so what i want to try and do then is heat it up and then see if we can get this nut remover on or the 22 mil which is obviously what it's meant to be Got it. I got it out. Now we've just got all the other ones to worry about. Okay, well that is freaking incredible news. Um, so I've been spending, I've just been away for the Easter weekend. Today is Wednesday. I think I spent Thursday and Friday trying various things to get this wheel off. And we finally done it. So what I did there was use this butane gas blowtorch 
to just heat the hell out of this wheel and uh, obviously this this lug nut in there uh, as you can see I've sort of damaged the alloy itself sort of melted it um, and for whatever reason that has meant that I've just been able to absolutely batter a 22 mil socket onto the lug nut and it's just come off with ease so um, let's now try and jack the car up and get the other three off and replace the wheel and then we've just got the other side where I think we're going to have a few more issues now the only problem is that when I'm hammering the one like that this 22 mil socket is absolutely well and truly I mean welded to the old lug nut so I don't think I'm going to be able to get that off so I've gone again to the shop spent more money and bought several 22 mil sockets in anticipation of the fact that well we're going to need new ones every time basically for every lug nut um, there may be a better way of doing it, or in fact I might even be able to use the blowtorch to melt this back off. But, I don't think I'm going to be able to reuse that. But I really don't care. If I can literally get the wheels changed, I will be so, so infinitely happy because, well, I'll have finally succeeded, but also we'll be able to move on to the next stages um, of the things that I want to sort of change in this, in this video. So I think I need to just jump in here because watching this back, I don't think you're going to feel sorry enough for me. Although ultimately to get the lug nuts off, it just required some heating and a 22 mil socket and a hammer. I did buy literally half of B&Q and Halfords before working that out. I bought a flathead screwdriver, a rubber mallet, a metal hammer, a metal filing set, two pairs of friction gloves, an impact wrench, electric screwdriver, a specialist nut removal kit, a half size socket set, a blowtorch, about 10 22 mil sockets and a barbecue. Oh wait, I, I don't think that's related. But I spent over 300 pounds on trying to get these bloody things off the car and you should very much feel sorry for me. Although now reading this back, actually I just sound like a complete idiot and you probably think I'm a moron. But nonetheless, this same method of removal worked for the other front wheel too. Heat the nut, hammer on a 22 mil socket, hard, and repeat on the other two nuts, in this case, that needed the same treatment. I'm going to put the car in to have the wheels aligned and balanced, and with that, they should be all done. I think they look great, although I do actually maybe prefer the old style. For me though, these are on better tires and in better condition, and so I'm happy. So next up on today's list is to replace the side lights. I've been getting a check side light warning intermittently on the car, so thought I'd change them out for some Xenons. This is actually an extremely easy job to do on these Range Rovers, as you're about to see, and so I'm thinking about upgrading all of the other headlight bulbs too. The bulbs I've bought here are actually really cheap ones, about five pounds on eBay, so we'll see how long they last. But for me, this was just an excuse to get the tools out and make a fool of myself on the internet. To change the side light bulbs, you have to take the headlight casing out. To take the headlight casing out, you have to remove the front grille, which is really easy. There's three Phillips head screws along the top that need to be removed, and then you just pull it off. You then have another three Phillips head screws on each side for the headlight casing. One of them is tucked away in the bottom right, which is the reason you need to first remove the grille. Once you've undone these, simply pull the casing out and remove the electrical connection at the back. Take your headlight to a workspace, or perhaps like me, the tailgate of your Range Rover, and remove the dish-shaped plastic panel by twisting. The side light bulb is removed by gently tugging on the black and red wires going into the plastic casing of the bulb itself. Once you've got that, just pull the bulb out and put the new one in. In terms of refitting the casing, it's just the reverse of what you did to take it out. And here's a before and after. So despite the rain then, I'm super happy because I feel like that's been a job well done. Now it might have taken you 20 minutes to watch this video, but it feels like it took me literally 20 years to do these modifications. I mean, it was the best part of two weeks from actually starting to finishing, mainly because of those wheels. But as you can see, this is what the car looks like now with the different wheels on. And I think it looks pretty darn good, actually. I'm really happy with the overall look of this car now. And you might have noticed, obviously, the mud flaps on the rear have now been deleted. Now, what I was talking about earlier on is, unfortunately, it does leave a hole here from where the plastic uh, sort of push-through clip was. There's 
obviously this sort of nut or screw exposed now, but that's not too much of an issue. And this one here is the one that will not come out because it's sort of expanded on the other side of this panel and so it will not pull through. So it doesn't look too bad, I think from a distance at least, you're not gonna tell that. And I think the look is a bit cleaner. Now, one thing I've discovered that you can do with these cars is install and retrofit the side steps. And that is something I'd potentially want to do with this because I do notice that jumping in and out of the car can be a little bit difficult um, without the side steps. And I do miss that from the old car. So potentially that's something I'd look at taking off the old car and putting onto here. It would just be a case of seeing whether that's compatible or not. But yeah, let me know what you think about the new wheels. I'm being totally honest with you. I'm thinking potentially about putting the old ones back on and just actually getting them refurbed and some fresh rubber because I think I prefer the way the old ones look. But that's not to say these don't look great because I think they do look fantastic. And as I mentioned, these are on Pirelli Scorpions and very fresh all round too. So it just drives much better for it. And lastly, although extremely simple, we've done the lights too. And, you know, it makes a nice difference. And I think it just brings the front again slightly more in line, at least with the existing headlights or dipped beams. And yeah, it just looks, looks good actually. So I'd be thinking about potentially doing some of the other lights on there because it is such an easy job. Obviously, you just take the grill off, take these out, but it's basically you're looking at six screws per headlight casing. And yeah, very happy with the result. There's actually, that's, I'm gonna show you one of the old mud flaps just there. So you can literally just see the connection points and that plastic bit there is the bit that uh, makes that little hole. But yeah, happy with how that's turned out and good progress nonetheless with this car, which I absolutely love by the way, if I haven't said enough. These Range Rovers are just unbeatable. Thank you all then so much for watching once more. Do appreciate it. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy this type of video. Obviously something slightly different, going a little bit more into the maintenance side of things. And um, yeah, stay tuned and subscribe for the next video, which sadly is not going to be so positive because it's about my other Range Rover and something very, very sad that's happened. So do stay tuned. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon.